Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over a blueprint interface to create interactions in your game. So previously I've made quite a few videos where I'm interacting with things, however we're just casting to our character to interact with them and using the input action each time. However using a blueprint interface is a lot lot more efficient. So I'm going to be going over how to set one up today and it's probably a lot more simple than you think it is. But first off I'll give a very basic explanation of what an interface is. So essentially it's just a blueprint in which we put in a read only function. So what that means is you can't actually create the function in there, like the code inside the function, it's just the input and output of said function and it's read only so again you can't edit that. Then you can call that interface and those functions in different blueprints. So if I were to call the interact interface function in my character blueprint and then have the event for the interact function in another blueprint, they will work simultaneously together. I don't know if that makes too much sense, however when I get into the video later on and you actually visually see it, it should make a lot more sense for you. So let me just give you a quick showdown of what we're going to make. So we're in first person, we press E, look at the object and it interacts with it. In this case it just destroys it so it looks like it's picking it up. But again, you can do that to be whatever you like. But without further ado, let's get right into this. So let me just delete this stuff and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to create our interact interface or any blueprint interface you want. So to do this, we're gonna right click, go to blueprints, and then get a blueprint interface. I'm gonna name this one interact interface like so, and open that up straight away. And again, as you can see here, we have the functions, and it says here read only because we can't put anything else in here. But this new function, I'm just gonna name interact. And you can add different inputs and outputs on here if you wanted. So if you wanted it to be a specific character, or if you wanted a boolean value or a float value on there, you could do that, and the same for the output. So if you maybe wanted to add an output of successful, let's say, or did interact, question mark, and then when it's finished, you can set whether it did or not interact with it. So then you can use that later on. So for example, if you're making an inventory system, you wanna know if you did actually interact with it, so you know whether or not you did actually pick it up. So then I'm gonna compile and save, because that's all we need to do in there. It's very simple, all we need to do is create the function and give it a name. And then we can close that straight away and open up our character blueprint and the other blueprint we want to interact with. So again, these are the blueprints you want this interface to be implemented on. So we want to use our character to interact. And then I've just got this interact object here as an example to interact with. So we're going to open up that object, which here you see is just a cube. I've got nothing else in here. It's literally just a cube. And then I'm also going to open up my character blueprint here, which again is not really anything else in here. It's just my normal character blueprint. And if I go to viewport, you see there's nothing else in here. However, I am using a first person camera and I do have a video on creating that as well if you want to, both just first person and third to first, back to third again. Once we've done that, we're gonna go over to the event graph here. And what we're going to do is go on class settings up at the top and you see we have interfaces. Implemented interfaces, we have no interface. So we're gonna hit add and we're gonna search for interact interface or whatever you named it and select the one you just made. If we compile, we now have that interface implemented in here. It is that simple. I'm gonna do the same on my interact object. So class settings, interfaces, add, and we do this. And you do this on every single blueprint you want to be able to interact with. So whether it's a character, whether it's an object, it's an item, it's a door, it's a car, anything like that, you put this interface on there. I'm gonna save that, go back to my character blueprint. And what we want to do now is we also want to create an input action. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to edit, project settings, go down to input, and delete the one I already have, and we're gonna create an action mapping. If you don't have these ones here already, don't worry, they're just from previous tutorials. So I'm gonna hit the plus action mapping, naming this one interact. I'm gonna set the key to be an E key. You can set this to be whatever you like, for example, E, F, left mouse button, anything like that. But for me, E is gonna work great. And I'm gonna close that like so. Back in our character event graph, we're gonna right click and call that interact action event we just made. So it's action event interact there. Let's zoom in. And now whenever we press E, it's gonna fire off this code. And what I'm gonna do is have it so we have to be looking at the object to interact with it. So very simply, I'm gonna come off the pressed of the interact there and get a line trace by channel. The start is gonna be our camera. The end is gonna be just in front of the camera. So I'm gonna get a reference to my first person camera here. Out of this, I'm going to get world location. So it starts where the camera is that's going to go in the start. Out of the camera again, I'm going to get the forward vector. So it goes in the forward facing direction of the camera, so in front of the player. 
Out of that, I'm going to get a vector multiplied by a float. This float value I'm going to set as 250. And essentially what this is, is this is how far in front of the player it's going to go. So for me, it's going to be 250 units in front of the player. Then I'm going to add that to the world location. So you get a vector plus a vector, the return value of that going as the end. And that's just to keep it going in a straight line. So it's going to draw a line from the camera's location to 250 units in front of the camera. If I then change draw debug type to for duration, we can hit play and see what this looks like. So I hit E, you see we then have that red line there. So essentially that is how far it's going to go. You might want to increase it, so if something's on the floor that's not going to reach it, you have to be looking quite close. But again, you just increase this float value here to get it longer, decrease the float value to get it shorter. That will work perfectly for you however you want to do it. I'm going to change for duration back to none on the draw debug type there. Then after this, we want to hold down B and left click to get a branch, connect to the condition to the return value and the execution in there, and that just means it's only going to fire off the code after this if this line trace actually hits something. Then out of the out hit, we're going to break hit result, open that up there so we can then access all the different things which we have from this line trace. We only want to use the hit actor to see which blueprint we've actually want to interact with. And out of the hit actor, we're going to get does implement interface so we can see if it implements the interact interface we've just made so we know whether or not we want to interact with it. We're going to close that there and move this up then hold down B and left click to get another branch that return value is the condition execution going into the true of the first branch we got because again we only want to fire this off if we hit something and we only want to fire off this code if we want to be able to interact with this blueprint. The interface in this is obviously going to be our interact interface we just made like so. And then if we come at the hit actor again, we should be able to then call interact there, interact interface, interact message, like so, going to the true of that branch. And what this means is whenever this is called, it's essentially like a call function. So it's going to call the function of interact, which we can set up in our object item like so. And again, it's only going to do it for the blueprint which we want to interact with. But this is that part done. So this is how we interact with something. We're going to see if we hit something when we press E, and if we do hit it, so we have to be looking at it, it's going to see if it wants to be interacted with. And if it does, it's going to interact with it. And again, you can see here, we have the did interact there like so, because that's what we added on. But again, you don't have to have that. You might not have it. It's just what I put on as an example. We can compile and save. And we can also close that because that's all we need to do in there. Now in our object we want to actually interact with, we've already implemented the interact interface. So what we can do is on the left here, you can see we have interfaces interact. If we double click on interact, you can see we have this here. So this is our function for interact. So this is again the same thing we had in the interface. However, we can now edit it because it's specific for this one blueprint. So out of interact, all I'm going to do is simply get a destroy actor because that's how I'm simply interacting with it. What I'm doing is I'm simply just going to destroy the actor so it looks like you've picked it up. Obviously, you can do anything you want in here. For example, you can add 10 health to the player, or you can take 10 health off the player, or add hunger, add stamina, add a battery level, anything along those lines. And I do have some videos going along with examples I've just mentioned. And if you want specific help for different things, let me know in the comments down below. I'm also going to tick did interact there, so we know that it did successfully interact with it. I'm going to compile, save, close that. Now we can hit play to test this out. If we hit play, press E, we see nothing happens. But if I look at this object here, hit E, it's going to be destroyed as we've just interacted with it. So you see, we did this with no casting whatsoever. So typically in here, what you might have is a box collision with begin and end overlap. You have to cast the character each time. And sometimes you might need to cast the character to see whether or not you want to do something. Obviously, that isn't that great. Or in our character blueprint, we might have to cast to the object we want to interact with. So here it would be a cast instead. Again, that's not ideal as casting is quite expensive on the system in the long term, so this is a lot more efficient. So again, let me show you that once again, the very simple thing. We look at it, hit E, it's going to interact with it with no casting required whatsoever. The interact is a lot, lot more efficient. So I think that'd be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. I've gone over a basic blueprint interface, which we have here. Again, it's literally just a read-only function, and we've implemented that into different blueprints, so we can then interact with each one via this interface. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.